dumbass shit about it, okay? Top 10 most disappointing games of 2023? Number yes. one. What is it? He's the top dog. Him? 227 murders. Men, women. Starfield makes sense. Uh, incredible hype. And it was a good game, but it was like a very above average game overall. For the hype that people had. For the hype that people had. It's just not, it's not going to work. It's ironic though, because the greatest thing that that game gave us was fucking pronouns, which is like a perma meme in this community. And I think that for that reason alone, it's like, it's wonderful. It's great. All right. The Apple Vision Pro is out. Ladies and gentlemen, it's like a $500 piece of equipment that is insane. It's bulky. It looks silly as hell. And yet tech reviewers and tech YouTubers and dudes who just love tech, okay? They are trying to make it work. Apple Vision Pro has finally arrived and users are coming up with insane ideas. Top 10 most incredible apps and use cases so far. Or not $500, what am I saying? It's like $4,000, fuck, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It's $3,500. If it was $500, it would be way, it would be kind of more worth, I think. I forgot, you're right. I don't know why I said $500, $3,500. <laughs> <laughs> like what that's Do wild. I look like real yeah i mean you're i'm gonna be honest with you this is so bad this part is like i've seen so many people talk about this like and and talk this up as though like the vision pro facetime with the vision pro is great and it's like no it's not it's terrifying burn it with a fire type shit it's literally ps2 graphics your eyes are close your it's too much teeth i think i don't know uh, I'm, i want to make a review come help me all right sounds good all right meet you downstairs at five all right All right, if you want like a normal review of this thing, I can't recommend enough to go watch, to go watch Marquez Brownlee's. His is fantastic. This is a different, like, I kind of have a different take on this and different questions, and that's what this is. But Marquez's is really good. What is this thing that I'm holding, literally? I feel like he had to wear that high visibility uh, jacket because like he's walking around with that thing and I don't feel safe. Okay. I feel like he needs, he needs people to be like, Hey guys, watch out. I don't, I can't really see that good. How do you find it? I had it for like an hour. Yeah. Okay. Can you put windows up now? If you want to yeah. So like I can put a window up now, yeah. but when I start walking, they like go away. They fade away. Yeah. Cool. Enjoy. Yeah, take care. Right, you too, get a random pile of bricks, an old toilet. I found the restroom. And a bunch of random wooden poles. There's more poles. See, I love, I love having this three thousand five hundred dollar machine on my brain, so I can watch Mr. Beast videos while I wait for the train. Pile. Let's pile onto that boat, please. And as you can see. Well, later in this video, we're going to a hundred island and also super island. But first, we're gonna head over to strategy for interact. Okay, my controversial opinion on the matter. Are you guys ready for it? Wearable tech will only get like broad usage when it is a reasonable price point and also beyond that is not as bulky okay that's it like it needs to be so much smaller if it was like regular glasses like the ones you wear and that still somehow was able to do augmented reality and it was like 500 bucks then yeah okay that's valid because i do see the utility in this okay but it needs to have, yeah, and, and good battery life. It needs to have good battery life. It needs to be actually fucking wearable and not like this big ass bulky, weird dystopian thing. And um, 
Everyone, wait, what? What do you mean everyone hated the AirPods when they came out? No, the AirPods do all of the things that I just mentioned. The AirPods are small, okay? Or, or do you mean the Air Max? Nobody made fun of the AirPods at all. People hated the aux removal. Oh, maybe that could be the reason. I don't know, but but yeah, no, it's it was small. It had pretty decent battery life, and it was actually very good. Like the AirPods are super high quality. I'm not an audio pervert, so don't yell at me for this, but they're pretty fucking they're pretty high quality. And and it's like super seamless too. You just boom, put it on, and it automatically it, it works really well with the Apple, with the iPhone, with the Apple products. So, um, we abuse people who wore Google glasses. I think that, um, I think that this is like way too fat is what I mean. It's way too fat. It's way too bulky. I don't know what the battery life looks like. We can watch the Marcus Brownlee video, uh, to get a better understanding of it. But like, it's just, uh, you know, remember Snapchat glasses? I do. I got them. I have Snapchat. I had Snapchat glasses. Acting with people. They gaslight you into thinking. So, if you're moving a lot while you're moving, this thing comes up that says tracking fail. So it doesn't track if you're moving a lot. It says nothing for the sensors to like lock on to. It doesn't know where to put stuff. But standing at a subway stop watching a Mr. Beast video is a pretty special... It's a pretty special experience. Hold on, Jordan. Let me try to figure out how to... What do you think? It's interesting. I, I, can't, imagine, I can't imagine why you're looking at... Uh... I'm looking at you right now. Oh, okay. I can see you clear as day. You got on a blue tie with a beautiful tie pin at the top. So I can see you. I get off here. Enjoy your adventure. Bye bye. <laughs> He's like, I'm done. <laughs> he didn't have to get off there, but he was worried. <laughs> He's uh, like, yeah, I'm getting off. I opened up you Apple TV. You freaked me the fuck out, sir. And it was like this window right here, Jordan. And as he started to move, the window went away with the back, with the subway car. You can't use windows if you're in like a, if there's a lot of movement, like kinetic movement. And I imagine it works in an airplane because the airplane is so steady, but this is a subway and it's bouncing. So I gotta wait till we get there. I mean, that's like a big, that's a big deal. Uh, I feel like if you can't use it in public transit, like it kind of doesn't work, right? I have this thing tethered to my iPhone. It seems to be working well enough. But for some reason, when I try to open Safari- Sorry, I, I didn't realize the video was much, much louder than me. My bad, here, I fixed it. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Okay, come on, dog. At least use your Apple Watch or something. I mean, he's just demonstrating how stupid that is, right? I was just responding to text messages. One of the things I hate about a lot of this stuff is that... Um... Chad, stop saying this is megaphonics coded. It is the most megaphonics coded shit of all time. I I think that like we are losing sight of why get it losing sight of why we have like haptic feedback on a lot of things. Okay. I think I think that like haptic feedback is very important. Okay, touch is very important. Uh, both as a just like as, a, as what makes us human, but also beyond that, like there is the, yeah, muscle memory. Like there's a reason why keyboards have buttons on them, right? There's a reason why keyboards are the way that they are. Oops. Like you, you, you memorize it and you don't have to look down and it makes it, it makes it much easier with your muscle memory to be able to type. And I feel as though, like, um, 
you know, like the Tesla ification of, of utilizing touchpads everywhere is genuinely ass. Um, there's a reason we went back to mechanical from rubber dome, even a distinction that fine is relevant. Yeah. There's certain things that have to be, there's certain things in my opinion that have to be like this. Uh, people said the same thing about the first iPhone keyboard. The future will leave you behind. You will be a boomer using his Blackberry phone with a physical keyboard. I mean, I use the iPhone keyboard, but it's not great. Obviously, uh, obviously like the keyboard keyboard that you have is significantly better than an iPhone keyboard. And if you were doing something like using your computer, you would not use a, uh, you would not use anything but a like real keyboard. Also, the Apple keyboard itself also kind of has like some level of like, uh, like something that is still tactile, I guess. Um, and is, and has like, um, some kind of, uh, some kind of, uh, haptic feedback as well. But by the way, it, the last time you tried VR was the HTC Vive. The tech has improved tremendously since then. A lot of people weighing on the AVP are people who tried the HTC Vive once in 2017 and think they're qualified. I mean, yeah, I haven't, I haven't tried any of the new shit. Okay. Vive. Vive is the last time I used, uh, any kind of, uh, serious VR. And honestly, it didn't make me feel good, which is why I stopped. Because like uh, the VR Alex, for example, like Half Life Alex, like it made me want to throw up. I am a firm believer that the iPads in cars is uh, genuinely troublesome. It's not good. It's not. I did play Half Life Alex uh, for a little bit, and I never finished it. Anyway, something to consider here is that you definitely should <clears throat> uh, in cars you definitely need that kind of thing you need knobs you need buttons you need all of that you definitely need all of that and i feel like in vehicles especially the reason why they take that stuff out is a cost adjustment for profits for profit margins um people i don't think realize that i think people think like oh no this is a cool thing it looks cool it's like no, you, you need knobs because the entire point of muscle memory is that you don't actually, like, you don't actually take your eyes off the road to like touch anything. No, you don't. When you can just say things to the car also wrong, because again, the more mechanical things remain, the better it is. The more analog things are, the better it is as a fail safe redundancy these are very important things in vehicles okay that's why uh this distinction dude you are so reactionary when it comes to tech also run the ad break is 144 what do you mean do you mean the middle of the hour ad break i ran that 14 minutes ago nobody looks at a light switch before flicking it it will always be better than a screen when you, where you have to look before you tap tapping it yeah i the thing I'm talking about with uh with cars is 100% correct. Um it's because screens are cheaper than buttons and knobs and all that shit now. Yes, that absolutely is the reason. Um but uh like I was saying, I'm not even talking about like oh, things feel weird now. Back in my day, things felt good. I'm simply stating there's a reason why, for example, Boeing planes have like, uh, uh, what is it called? Fly by wire. Obviously not the great, uh, greatest example to make here because like their, their track record for other stuff hasn't been great, but there's a reason why in airplanes, for example, you have like multiple redundancies built in or sorry, Airbus has fly by wire. Boeing has like the mechanical, um, the mechanical suspensions, I think, but regardless, you need to have, you need to have like genuine, uh, uh, haptic feedback and, and, uh, tactile, like a, like a feeling, uh, so you can have muscle memory and have things run analog for instant, for, for situations where, uh, all else fails.
And yes, it is not a Luddite opinion to think buttons are superior in vehicles. There's legislation about this in the EU. Yeah. There, it's a limitation that we as humans, uh, that we have as humans, the tech needs to adapt to us, not the other way around for safety. Why do you need to have them? You need to have them because the... Uh, you need to have them for safety and you need to have them for efficiency and you need to have them specifically so you can, you don't have to shift your attention away to another screen when you're doing something. Okay. When you're doing something that requires all of your attention, like driving a 3000 pound death machine. Okay. Around pedestrians, you need to never have your eyes off the fucking wheel, off the, off the goddamn, uh, uh, the road. You have to look at the road. You have to have your hands on the wheel and you have to have, uh, and you have to have your eyes on the road. I don't think people understand that. You can't even find a 3000 car in the U S anymore. Fucking SUVs. That's also true. And I say this as someone who does have a, a pretty high-tech vehicle. I mean, I have a take and it is a EV, and it does have a lot of the um, the the cool iPad tech in it. Luckily, it still has uh, uh, some kind of uh, gear shifting in it, but. You're the only person I wanted to be. In case he weighs, in case he weighs, I can't tell. Can you not tell? No way. Oh my god. Here, we were like, we were we just yeah, say oh my it. god. No way. I'm actually freaking out. The idea that I can have my whole like computer digital online world that exists in the real world, that's what, that's what feels like is bigger than AR or VR. Like I have the Oculus, it's great, but it definitely feels like a toy. Boeing aircraft have physical linkages. Airbus is fly-by-wire. Neither of them have anything to do with physical controls. Although aviation did move away from touchscreens very quickly because pilots couldn't accurately make inputs. I worked in automotive AI and automation previously, and your take on this is 100% correct. Thank you. The haptic feedback and processing from our somato sensory system is vital for our proprio knowing where our body is in space. Jesus, you guys are using a lot of words, but you agree with me, so I'm going to go ahead and, and, and say yes. Um, but, but listen, 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 listen. It's just, it's, it's like this. Imagine typing something in a dream if you've ever had a situation like that versus like actually physically touching something. Obviously, one is, is much more efficient Proprioception, proprioception, body awareness in space. Um, it's like telling everyone they have to use a touch screen for their PlayStation controller. Yeah, it's just analogs are great for some. Uh, like the Dual Shock has two analogs or or two joysticks, right? For a reason, it has a touch screen. But if you were to use like a uh, uh, if you were to use like a touchpad, like on your phone, it's very different. The, the adjustments that you can make on touchscreen controllers are always going to be limited in comparison to, in comparison to like the actual physical joysticks that you're using. This feels like a little glimpse into the future of what computing could be like down the road. Why is everybody staring at me? <laughs> Do I look as ridiculous as those people make me feel like I look? Uh, you're just your eyes are glowing. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, Jordan, you're standing right in front of my Mr. Beast video. <laughs> Come right there. Okay. Years ago. This used to be a bar? Yep. Yeah, you want to walk under this? Yeah. Right, so the idea of spatial computing, it doesn't make sense to me when I'm sitting in my office. I've got multiple screens. But right now I'm like in the city. I'm in the middle of Times Square. I've got my virtual... 
I mean, there is something that I do like about this, uh, I guess because it's like very much uh, in line with my mentality that like I always want to be on, but I also simultaneously want to like experience the world, which is why I've said before, like if I had a, a, a solid, reliable, accessible uh, Starlink connection, I would probably be able to do a lot more. Having this level of like computing power directly in front of your face is not bad especially for someone like myself because i am terminally online okay the issue however in my opinion is that this is a tech specifically for early adopters who want to be at the forefront that's it it's just not like good enough to to utilize yet little keyboard here i've got apple tv there i got YouTube Safari's open here, and it all kind of works. <laughs> like this, what I've got going on right now, this is wild. It's impossible for me to imagine that you can't see what I can see. Everything seems so real, and then I can just stand up. Also, it's kind of, dude, this is wild. This is literally like simulating being a schizophrenic person in public in a way that is like, like you are literally, technically you are hallucinating in public. Like that's what you are doing. It's simulated psychosis. Yes. It's so weird when you think about it. I, I don't know. It's, it's so odd to No, Hassan. You just sold 10K more units. I'm not trying to sell this at all. The butterfly is eating my donut. Like, what happens when you get scared? Like, you just have to do, like, a like a quick reaction. Like, and then you accidentally hit someone. I feel like that's going to happen way more frequently. I mean, we've often, we've often talked about how like we live life now in the meat space specifically to get points in the internet, right? Going to a place so that you can post an Instagram photo that's going to get a lot of likes is literally the exact version that every normal person even engages in now. It's not just relegated to... It's not just relegated to like the online influencers and whatnot, okay? Yeah, at a certain point, at a certain point, maybe it was like originally the the TikTokers and the not the TikTokers, but like you know people who were taking photos of themselves and like only uh, you know taking a perfect photo of a food before they eat it, uh, because that was like all influencers did. Now everyone does it. Ten years later, everyone does it. Literally, every human being does it. So much so that you have places in the real world specifically designed for people, like normal people to go there, take a photo, 
and and uh, gain, I guess, like a little bit of social clout from their group of friends, and then consume the food. No, they don't. No, we don't. You guys are literally on Twitch, man. You are the most permanently online. You are at the. You've already transcended beyond what normal people do. You just spend all of your time directly tapped in online. You don't even do shit in the fucking physical space. I'm talking about like regular people. I'm talking about a bus driver. I'm talking about a person who lives in fucking Kansas. No, it's not an LA brain take at all. You are wrong. There are plenty of normal people that do activities in the real world specifically uh, to, to showcase it on the internet. Okay? We have, we have transcended beyond like people who are influencers doing this to like normal people doing it. You're, you're wrong about this. Okay? It's because they don't leave their house to touch grass and take a pic for Insta. That's what I mean. Exactly. I just walked to the farmer's market with my neighbor and dog despite being terminally online. Okay, well, my point is... My point is, a lot of people do things now, um, originally things that like influencers or uh, whatever used to do, now normal people do as well. Normies do as well, okay? It's very, very common for normal people to engage in that sort of behavior too. Um, yeah, museums have like Instagram walls, exactly. Um, how else will I, will my ex know that I moved on? Yeah. So, so this is the next stage in this. Okay. This is the next stage in, in what I'm talking about where like, sure. I think inevitably, uh, uh, wearables will get like mass adoption. It's just not there yet. The technology is not there yet. Uh, uh, augmented reality is not there yet. It's not as wearable. It's in, it's also obviously inaccessible, uh, price point wise. Uh, I think, yeah, Google Glass's problem was that it was too early. Okay. That's the issue. But I do find it really crazy that now you can bring in a, in a seamless way, you can bring online to the real world making you even more online so that you can experience online while you're outdoors touching grass. Obviously you could do that with your phone, but now it's like directly incorporated into your directly incorporated into your regular everyday existence. It's kind of wild. The concept for this video was to run around New York city wearing these. Cause I thought that would be funny. I think it was funny, but something happened. Something happened today that was completely unexpected. And that something I don't think anyone else has really touched on. None of the reviews I've seen or read, none of them really uh, put to words what I experienced. So when you take these off, they kind of go to sleep like your phone. And when you put them back on, you have to unlock them. They scan your eyeballs and then to start screen recording, go through the, it takes a second. So rather than doing that, I just left these on the entire day. Um, the like two and a half hour battery pack you can plug into a fatter battery. So I never ran out of battery power. And that's crazy. See, that's what I mean. That's like, that is insane. Okay. That's insane. Jerry rigging to like specifically be able to run this for like a long ass time, uh, way beyond like what it would normally run for. Okay. A couple of hours of running around the streets of New York, as in not in a controlled environment, my brain sort of clicked and it just forgot that I was looking through cameras and screens. And it just, it, it took what it saw as reality. And that is what- I think what he's, what he's describing is like getting comfortable with VR in general though. Like, <laughs> anyway, I hate this user here. He's so Zionist and Israel supporter. Okay, well, he's not talking about Israel. He's talking about Apple Vision Pro, okay? It's fine. We can set, we can differentiate in Whereas this circumstance. This this um it's ar yes i'm saying that it happens in vr too okay it's just vr is also wearable tech what are you talking about what i'm saying is like 
what he's experiencing is something that you experience when you ever when the first time you use VR, like you start uh you start being more comfortable in it, right? You just get used to it. Yeah, we're going to talk about the dummies that have been doing dumb shit with it and also some of the people that are using it in creative ways. That's where the, that profound moment came from. And what occurred to me as I was sitting there in Times Square on a bench, strangers all around me, the real world moving all around me. But I had like a big screen up where I was watching a Mr. Beast video. And then over here I had this keyboard that I could interact with. And over here I had my iMessages. And over here I had my Apple TV and then all of my apps. And they're floating in Times Square in the middle of New York City. They're floating there and I'm actually there. And there's actual humans around me. And in that moment, I was like, holy shit, this is it. This is the future of computing that everyone's been promising for like the last 15 years. This is something that like, let me like truly peek into where we're at, where all of this is going. I don't think he's wrong. No, it's not copium. I don't think he's wrong. He's absolutely right. It's just, he's right. It's just that it's not here yet. That's it. I like when people go, it was such a social behavior, but like that is where we are going. That is absolutely the direction that we are heading. Okay. I think that he is definitely right. I think that um, eventually in the next 10 years, I suspect we will start seeing way more ver wearable shit it just makes sense that we are becoming even more isolated and then the only the only interactions inevitably that we will have with other people are going to be just online okay it's it's dystopian from where i'm standing and it should it, it, and it's probably dystopian for you as well because we're a little bit older um, and we lived in a world where there was no, uh, we lived in a world where internet was not readily available. I did at least. And, uh, I lived in a world where I did not have a smartphone until I was 18 years old. Think about that. I didn't have a smartphone until I was 18 years old. So I think that, um, that's the direction that we're heading towards. And I don't think you have to be like truly prophetic to, to recognize that. Uh, well, yeah, I think, I think he's right. Mm. This isn't the, like the future of AR or VR. This is the, I think this is the future interface for all computing. I think when they figure out how to make these not be these heavy $4,000 metal ski yeah. goggles, but you know, maybe they look like these glasses or something even smaller, yeah. that that is what it'll be. In the morning, you won't remember your phone. You put it on and then that's it. And yeah. It's like, hold on, I've got a call. Hey, what's up, mom? I'll call you back. You look great, by the way. And that's what it's going to look like. And these show you that. These reveal that. I am like... I Chat is talking about editing Excel spreadsheets. You might not do that. Some people might. But you're forgetting how much time you spend on your phone. Okay? The amount of time you spend on your phone is what you would do with the wearable tech instead. And it would probably even increase. As a geek, that was the thing I've been looking for forever. And they did it right here on a product that has like, uh, a product that is so new. This has been out for 12 hours. And I- There's a meme about how you can tell a millennial from a Gen Z uh, by what device they use to send an important email. Millennials prefer to send it from a laptop or PC rather than their phone. Yeah, exactly. And then we will inevitably move into Butlerian Jihad as a consequence of the AI technology becoming uh, way, way, uh, way too intrusive. Um, but yeah, like we still have, I just, I don't think that interacting with human beings online will ever be a decent substitute for like, will ever be a decent substitute for interacting with human beings in the real world, going outside. Okay. And I don't think that, I don't think that these glasses will, uh, make us go outside more. Let's say if they were easily, uh, if they were easily accessible, cheaper and very wearable. Okay. I'm talking like 10 years into the future 
when we get to a point, when we get to a point when these things are are easy to use, okay, um, it's it's not going to make us uh go outside and fucking uh, uh, interact with one another in the real world is going to make us further isolated. There is like, it's a way to bring the internet. It's a way to bring the internet into the meat space rather than it's like the next step in our evolution towards being able to avoid the top of the hour ad break. Right? Like you'll be able to sit at the subway station and watch the awesome house and and at the top of the hour, get served a three minute ad break. And, and just uh, skip it with ease in your uh, in your AR augmented reality wearable technology. It's crazy, but for the time being, you still have to subscribe for five dollars or for free with a Twitch Prime, or by getting gifted a sub. You seriously think people are just gonna stop seeing each other? IRL, come on, man. There's an innate desire to have human interaction and touch. Just look at how depressed everyone got th during COVID. I mean, this is like probably the worst community to talk about uh, this sort of thing in because we're at Twitch. Many people were already living like increasingly isolated lives and uh, they were already like relatively agoraphobic. But you have to remember, people said this about Google Glass 11 years ago. Yes, Google Glass was way too ahead of the game. Google Glass's biggest issue was that it was too early. It happens. Sometimes tech is too early. I think even the, uh, Apple, uh, the Apple Vision Pro is too early. And that's why they're making no... It seems like that, yeah, Google Glass is like the PSP, okay? Think about the Switch, think about the Steam Deck, okay? And then think about the PSP. The PSP had genuine limitations. It was the greatest technological marvel at the time, in my opinion, but unfortunately, it was ahead of its, uh, it was ahead. It was too ahead, and it also had some serious limitations with, uh, with the second, uh, you know, with the second controller. Okay. The PSP was hot, but the PS Vita wasn't. Exactly. But by the time PS Vita came out, it was already too late. That's what I'm trying to say. Nintendo did VR in the 1900s. The PSP was at least popular. Wait, what? I think VR is a mature enough market at the release of AVP that any social normalization of this tech will have already basically happened. I really don't think AVP will make people suddenly think it's cool and normal in society. MetaQuest 2 plus 3 uh, together have shipped millions of units as holiday gifts as a known space. Yeah, but it's in your house. What are you talking about? That's VR. This is bringing it outside. There is still that major difference, in my opinion, between VR and AR. Like, this is wearable tech that you wear outside. You're, you're, it's still like, can you use a, a, a meta vision quest outdoors? No, right? Wonder what the porn industry would do with this tech chatter. I don't know if you know this, but there's VR porn out there already. Don't ask me how I know that. It already exists. Porn has always historically been at the cutting edge of technology. Okay. Um, they have always been early adopters. Isn't like, isn't one of the major leaps in technology, uh, one that directly came from porn? Which one was it? I think VHS and DVD, right? Both VHS and DVD were like directly, or was it Betamax? I don't remember, but one of those things was like, yeah, porn and porn and military technology is always at the cutting edge. Porn decided between HD DVD and Blu-ray and Betamax and VHS before that. He left. Who left? felt it so i don't know that i this seems like it only works in first world countries yeah there is like obviously first world countries are obviously like infinitely far ahead due to their material circumstances than third world countries yes and oftentimes due to capitalism third world countries developing nations unironically get like the shittiest and the most like 
safeguarded versions of the same product, India, for example, or other like developing nations, for example, get like Facebook phones, right? They get like the shittiest version of it where basically the entirety of the internet that you experience is walled garden. But, but there are also places in India where there are no fucking bathrooms, but in those very same places, motherfuckers are aware of the internet and use it from time to time, maybe like once a week. Okay. And it's kind of crazy to think about. Bro watched Elysium and started chatting. The third world doesn't have Shane Gillis. Wow. Very Western brain. No, my, yeah. It's just like. What is this? I don't know if this is real or not. PlayStation Portable 2, the new report stating that Sony's 